So we need a much better approach, and we're going to study two of them. And the first one is called Kruskal's algorithm. The second one is going to call, be called Prim's algorithm. Now, I've found over the years that students can't remember which one is Kruskal and which one is Prim, and they always get it confused. So I'm going to give you a, a descriptive word. Kruskal's algorithm is patterned after the concept of avoiding cycles. We know the solution that we're after at the end will have no cycles. Kruskal's algorithm has a simple implementation. Well, both algorithms do. In Kruskal's, you begin by sorting the edges by weight from little to big. If there's ties in your sort, by the way, doesn't matter the order that you place them. But sort the edges with the preferred ones because you're after the minimum weight spanning tree. So the preferred ones at the top of your list are the ones of less weight. And at the absolute top is the edge or the edges which have minimum weight. Then you simply build your tree by selecting edges one at a time in a greedy manner. And the rule is that the edge that you select must satisfy the property that it does not form a cycle. So you avoid cycles among the edges you have chosen. So uh, waving hands approach. Here's the list. You always take the edge which is listed first in your sort. Your second move is you always take the edge that's on the second line. It doesn't matter whether those edges share a common endpoint or they're like this. You always take those two because two edges cannot form a cycle. Now you look at the third edge. You take it unless it forms a cycle when added to the first two. Is that possible? Well, yes, it's possible. It might happen that the first two do indeed look like this. And that the third one, when added to the first two, forms a triangle. That's a cycle. So you can't do it. That cannot be a solution. So you would not select it. But if the first two look like this, then it doesn't matter what the third one looks like. You take it. And you continue in that manner. So the image that you should have in your head is that implementing Kruskal's algorithm produces this little local pockets. It, it produces a forest along the way. Here's some edges over here. They form a tree. Here's some edges over here. They form a tree. Here's some edges. They form a tree. Here's a couple of vertices that are isolated. They haven't been connected to anything yet. And now I'm looking at my edges, and I've worked my way down a certain distance. Now I'm looking at the next edge. I, I have already scanned all the edges above it. I pick up this edge, and I take it unless it forms a cycle. Now how does it form a cycle? It forms a cycle when there's some component in the forest that I have to this point where both the endpoints of that edge are in that, are in that component. So you can see it forming a cycle like that. But if, it, if it's my cheapest edge has one endpoint here and another endpoint over here, I take it. It's that simple. Avoid cycles. Take the cheapest edge you can, avoiding cycles, and repeat. And repeat until you get a spanning tree. That's greedy. You never back up. You never say, oh, I better pay a penalty now and take an expensive edge. I'll sacrifice now, and later I'll get it back. No, 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 no. In this algorithm, you're always being greedy. You take the cheapest one, which is legal. OK, let's actually go through an implementation. <clears throat> and my implementation is pictorial. I strongly encourage you to look through the test archive, and you'll see a number of instances 
where uh, I've given you pictures like this, or I have given you the data for a graph and asked you to carry out Kruskal's algorithm and later Prem's algorithm. So do, do check this. Okay, so I haven't provided the sword on the edge. We're going to have to do this on the fly. Look at the edges and imagine that I have sorted them from least to greatest. And in this instance, the cheapest edge of all is 23. There are no ties, by the way, here. Uh, and again, let me repeat, if there are ties, it does not matter in what order you work your way through the ties. All right, so the cheapest edge of all is 23. And that one I take for certain. Now, what do I do next? Out of all the remaining edges, choose one of minimum weight. And I take it because it can't form a cycle. Now I have two edges. Do you see the forest? The forest consists of two trees, which each of which have a single edge. And all the other components of the forest are trivial. They're just loose vertices. OK, now what do I do? Pick up the next edge. OK, you look at the picture and tell me what is the next edge I would take. I, I heard two different answers. Now, now, I mean, this is pictorially a little bit challenging. But for a computer, this is trivial. The computer has sorted these edges, and it's just taking the next one. All right, now, we're, we're doing it visually, so it's a little bit more challenging. I see a 32. I see a 31. Uh, you see, I see, now we've already taken 23 and 29. Is 31 the next cheapest one? Everybody agreed? So we'll take that one. And now we continue. What's the next edge that you would take? Is 32? What's the next edge you would take? The edge from 1 to 3. And actually, that's a very good way to describe it. Because the edge has endpoints. To, to specify the edge, say the edge from 1 to 3. It, yes, you're just working your way down, and you see edge from 1 to 3, and it has weight 47. OK, so we take that one, and at least it agrees with the slides. OK, now notice that one of the components of the forest that I'm building thus far consists of all those edges, and there are two other components. Those are loose vertices. But in general, when you're at an intermediate step in the implementation of Kruskal's algorithm, I remind you that in general, you have a forest with many components. This example only has eight vertices, so I can't get many, many components. OK, now the next edge is 54. Now what's the next cheapest edge? Just if I'm just scanning down the list, after 54, what would I see? I see the edge from 3 to 2 or 2 to 3 at weight 55. That's the one that I would grab. But then I would reject it. Why would I reject it? Because if you take that edge, I'm saying on the slide just what I said out loud, if you take that edge of 55, you form a cycle, a cycle of size 3. But I don't care about the size of the cycle. 3, 3,000, 3 million, doesn't matter. If you form a cycle, you've made a mistake. So you reject an edge. And again, how do I know? I don't have to see a picture. I have a listing of the components. And prior to this step, one of the components has as its vertex set 8, 4, 2, 5, 3, 1, 6. 
that set of vertices. Now the other components, uh, there's only one other component, and it's a single vertex 7. So when I look at the candidate 55, I see its endpoints are 2 and 3, and I ask the computer, tell me whether or not 2 and 3 are in the same component thus far. The computer answers yes. So I thank you very much for that information, and based on that, I reject that edge and move on to the next one. Okay. Now, what edge will I wound up, wind up taking? I will take the edge from 37, which is weight 66, and I get an answer of 282, which is a heck of a lot better than the 400 and something that was on an earlier slide. All right, but at this point, the only thing that I'm hoping is clear to you is how to carry out this algorithm. It's a very simple, simple process, and it's very greedy in its structure. Are there any questions about the implementation of Kruskal's algorithm, avoiding cycles?